The Ugly Duckling by Hans Christian Andersen. It was so glorious out in the country. It was summer. The cornfields were yellow. The oats were green. The hay had been put up in stacks in the green meadows. And the stork went about on his long red legs and chattered Egyptian. For this was the language he had learned from his good mother. All around the fields and meadows were great forests, and in the midst of those forests lay deep lakes. Yes, it was right glorious out in the country. In the midst of the sunshine there laid an old farm with deep canals about it, and from the wall down to the water grew great burdocks, so high that little children could stand upright under the loftiest of them. It was just as wild there as in the deepest woods, and here sat a duck upon her nest. She had to hatch her ducklings, but she was almost tired out before the little ones came, and then she so seldom had visitors. The other ducks liked better to swim about in the canals than to run up to sit down under a burdock and cackle with her. At last, one eggshell after another burst open. Peep, peep, it cried, and in all the eggs there were little creatures that stuck out their heads. Quack, quack, they said, and they all came quacking out as fast as they could, looking all around them under the green leaves, and the mother let them look as much as they chose, for green is good for the eye. How wide the world is, said all of the young ones, for they certainly had, been, had much more room now that, than when they were in the eggs. Do you think this is all the world, said the mother? That stretches far across the other side of the garden, quite into the parson's field, but I have never gone there before. I hope you all, all together, and she stood up. No, I have not at all. The largest egg still lies there. How long is that to last? I am really tired of it. And she sat down again. Well, how goes it? asked an old duck who had come to pay her a visit. It lasts a long time with that one egg, said the duck who sat there. It will not burst. Now, only look at the others. Are they not the prettiest little ducks one could possibly see? They are all like their father. The rogue, he never comes to see me. Let's see the egg which will not burst, said the old visitor. You may be sure it is turkey's egg. I was once cheated in that way and had much anxiety and trouble with the young ones for they are afraid of the water. Must I say it to you? I could not get them to venture in. I quacked and I clacked, but it was no use. Let me see the egg. Yes, that's a turkey's egg. Let it lie there and teach the other children to swim. I think I will sit on it a little longer, said the duck. I've sat so long now that I can sit a few days more. Just as you please, said the old duck, and she went away. At last the great egg burst. Peep, peep, said the little one, and crept forth. It was very large and very ugly. The duck looked at it. It was a very large duckling, said she. None of the others look at that. Can it really be a turkey chick? Well, we shall soon find out. It must go into the water, even if I have to thrust it in myself. The next day it was bright, beautiful weather. The sun shone on all the green trees. The mother duck went down to the canal with all her family. Splash! She jumped into the water. Quack, quack, she said, 
and one duckling after another plunged in. The water closed over their heads, but they kept up in an instant and swam capitally. Their legs went of themselves, and they were all in the water. The ugly gray duckling swam with them. No, it is not a turkey, said she. Look how well it can use its legs, and how straight it holds itself. It is my own child. On the whole, it's quite pretty, if one looks at it rightly. Quack, quack, come with me, and I'll lead you out into the great world and present you in the duckyard. But keep close to me so that no one may tread on you and take care of the cats. And so they came into the duckyard. There was a terrible ride going on there, for two families were quarreling about an eel's head, and the cat got after it all. See, that's how it goes in the world, said the mother duck, and she wetted her beak, for she too wanted the eel's head. Only use your legs, she said. See that you can bustle about and bow your heads before the old duck yonder. She's the grandest of all here. She of all of Spanish blood. That's why she's so fat. And do you see? She has a red rag around her leg. That's something particularly fine and the greatest distinction a duck can enjoy. It signifies that one does not want to lose her and that she's to be known by the animals and by men too. Shake yourselves, don't turn in your toes. A well brought up duck turns its toes quite out, just like father and mother. So, now bend your necks and say quack. And they did just so. But the other ducks round about looked at them and said quite boldly, Look here, there, 